Hey guys, I'm Eva. And I'm Bianca. And today we're going to teach you about conics. But before we do that, we're going to show you a small clip about the history of conics. So when the first person discovered conic and sections, he had something like this. This is our visual representation of a conic, uh, which is two cones. Then he started cutting them up to discover the circle, parabola, ellipse, and hyperbola. First, he cut it um, straight horizontally like this, and found a circle, so as you can see. Then he cut it slanted from the surface like this and found the parabola. Then once again he cut it slanted but now like from the middle like this and found an ellipse. And lastly he cut it straight down getting both of the cones like this and to get a hyperbola. And that's how the conics were discovered. Okay, so before we begin, let's go over some key terms that we will be using during this lesson. section. This is how a circle looks on the graph. The equation of the circle is x minus h squared minus y minus k squared equals r squared. The center is classified as h, k, and any point on the circle is classified as x, y. Since our circle is centered at the origin, our center will be 0, 0, changing our equation to x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If you're given the problem that only shows you the graph you can, and you're looking for r, you can use this equation y equals plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x minus h squared plus k, which derives from this equation. Okay, now we're going to be going over parabolas. For parabolas, we have these four types of graphs which are all centered at the origin. 
We have some that open on the y-axis and some that open on the x-axis. First, we'll be looking at the ones that open on the y-axis. Okay, now let's look at our first graph. Our first graph is opening on the y-axis to the positive side. Let's discuss the major components about this graph. First, let's start with the formula. The formula for this is x squared equals to 4ay. This formula will give you this type of graph. The vertex, as we mentioned earlier, is at the origin. So our vertex will be 0, 0. Our focus for this type of graph will be around right here, and the point for that will be 0, A. A, you will get it from your equation. Then your directrix will be y equals negative a. Negative a means it will be down here. It will be about right here. The same distance from here will be the same distance from here. Now let's look at our second graph. Our second graph also opens on the, on the y-axis, but this time it opens on the negative. The components for this graph is almost similar to, the, to this one, but with a difference of a few negatives. Um, the formula for this graph is x squared equals negative 4ay. Similar to this one, but now it will be negative since it opens on the negative side. Our vertex is still the same. It's still on the origin, so it will be 0, 0. Our focus in this, in this case will be somewhere around here, so it will be 0, negative a. And our directrix will now be up here like this. The same distance from here will be the same distance from here. So it will be y equals positive a. Now let's discuss the graphs that open on the x-axis. This one opens on the positive side. Let's discuss its components. The formula for this one is y, e y squared equals to 4ax. Um, the vertex, as we mentioned earlier, is still centered at the origin, so it is 0, 0. The focus for this one is now placed on the x-axis as well, so it will be a, 0. The directrix will now be on the negative side of the x-axis, which would be around here, which means x equals a, oh, negative a. The same distance from here will be the same distance from here. Now let's see the one that opens on the negative side. It's the same as the other one. Has The components are almost the same except with a few negatives as a difference. This one, the formula is y squared equals to negative 4ax since it opens on the negative side. The vertex is still at the origin, so it's still 0, 0. Our focus is now on the negative side of the x-axis. So our focus is now negative a, 0. And our directrix is now on the positive side of the x-axis. About here, that makes it x equals a. Which is the same distance from here will be the same distance from here. Those were the graphs for the parabolas and their components. Okay, now we're going to talk about ellipses. We have two types of ellipses, horizontal ellipse and vertical ellipse. Uh, you can remember horizontal ellipse by looking at it, it looks um, short and fat. And for vertical ellipse, it's tall and skinny. Okay, uh, first we're going to start with the horizontal ellipse. This is how it looks on X and Y axis. It's red dots. Um, there are its critical points. Okay, so now let's look at the major components of the horizontal ellipse. So first we're going to start with the major and minor axis of the horizontal ellipse. Um, the major axis is the longest diameter of our, of our ellipse. In this case, it's the x-axis. And our minor axis is the shortest diameter. So in this case, it's the y-axis. So now this is the horizontal ellipse equation. It's um, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Okay, so this information here are our critical points. Um, the center, which is classified as hk, in this case, our horizontal ellipse is centered at the origin, so it makes it 0, 0. 
Okay, vertices, we have V1 and V2, which are classified as negative A0 and A0. The A value, you get it from the equation, which means um, th that is the distance from the center to the vertex. So this is, will be negative A. Also. Okay, and this is the A. For the vertical and this, this is the same procedure, but we have uh, different components as the major axis and the minor axis. In this case, the major axis, the longest diameter um, is going to be the y axis, and the shortest diameter is the x axis. Okay, this is our vertical ellipse equation. Um, it's x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. It's the same as a horizontal ellipse, it's just that A and B are now switched since A is under Y, which is now our major axis. Okay. Our center is still the same since it's still center at the origin. Our vertices are now 0, negative A and 0, A. And our foci, it's also 0, negative C and 0, C. Now we'll be discussing the last conic section, the hyperbola. We have two types of hyperbolas. We have the one that open on the y-axis and the one that open on the x-axis. Let's go over the ones that open on the y-axis first. So first we're going to be going over this type of hyperbola. This type of hyperbola is the one that opens on the y-axis. You may be wondering what all, the, what all of these things are, but don't worry, we're going to be going over them in a bit. First, let's start with the formula. The formula for this type of graph is y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals to 1. This equation will give you this type of graph. The center, as we said before, is still at the origin. So it's 0, 0 right here. Our foci, we still would, in this case, we have 2. Our f1 and f2 are the, are the components of 0, negative c, and 0, c. Our vertices, which are these two points right here, are classified as 0, A, and 0, negative A. Our oblique asymptotes for these types of hyperbolas are y equals plus or minus A over B, X. These, this, these equations are going to give you your asymptotes. Your transverse axis, which is the axis that has your foci, and for this hyperbola is your y axis. Now we're going to start our second type of hyperbola. This hyperbola opens on the x-axis. It also has the same marks as the other one, but a little bit different on the components. Okay, first let's start with the formula. The formula for this one is now x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals to 1. This equation will give you this type of graph. Our center is still at the origin, 0, 0. Our foci is now on the x-axis, so our foci will be uh, c, zero, negative c, 0, and c, 0. These two points right here. Our vertices are, are now going to be negative a, 0, and a, 0. These two points right here. Now for our oblique asymptotes, our equation is now y equals plus or minus b over a x. These equations are going to give you your asymptotes. Our transverse axis, which is the axis where it has both full sides, is now the x axis. So those were the graphs and the components of our hyperbolas.